So I have the pleasure of bringing everyone in here. Hello, good evening to everyone. Thank you very much for joining us and um, great to have you all. What I'll do is I'm going to ask everyone to just do a very, very quick introduction of themselves. And um, we'll probably go in the order that we're speaking. So I'll start with Tim, then Annette, then Kampara, Bruce Patterson, and then I'll get all three panelists to introduce themselves. So probably starting off quickly, Tim, in, uh, in 30 seconds to a minute. Okay, good evening, good evening, everyone. Thank you for attending. Um, Tim Robinson's my name. I'm a retired GP, retiring after 30 yes, years sir. in general practice. Um, and I now currently work for NHS England, the long COVID lead for the southwest of the UK. Um, I also work in two separate uh, post-COVID services, assessment services, both in the southwest of England. And finally, I'm uh, working for NHS Improvement on the post-COVID assessment task force down here in Southwest region. So that's my lot. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, we have, where did Annette go? I've just temporarily lost Annette for, um, for a moment. Oh, there we go. Annette and yourself. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Good evening, everyone. My name is Annette Offringa and I'm a general practitioner. I have my own practice in the Netherlands. Um, and for the last five or six years, I've been doing research on um, disease mechanisms. And starting uh, after this summer, I will be doing research uh, in, an, in a research institute on uh, systems biology. So there will be basic research. I've uh, published uh, five articles on COVID uh, until now. Um, and the sixth, uh, sixth one is uh, on its way. Excellent, excellent. And we'll quickly introduce Shankara. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm Dr. Shankara Chetty. I'm a general practitioner in private practice in South Africa, running my own practice. I'm a frontline worker and I've been seeing COVID from March last year. Uh, so thanks. Thanks again for being here. Wonderful. And uh, we've got uh, Bruce Patterson as well from the USA. Hi, Bruce. Oops, we temporarily lost Bruce, but we'll quickly move on and I'll ask John to give a quick introduction of himself. Okay, I'm John Abelis. I'm a physician and a, and a pharmacologist. I had a career in uh, medicine and then the pharmaceutical industry as a drug developer and then on Wall Street as an analyst of what's going on in the uh, pharmaceutical industry across the board and uh, all the research going on. After which I became uh, a developer of emerging medical companies and a venture capitalist entrepreneur and I'm involved with several biopharma companies that I've helped to uh, promulgate and begin, one of which is involved in, in, in COVID. Excellent. And um, we've got um, Bruce Uhal. Your mute mic is muted. Hi, Bruce. Hello. Hello, everyone. I'm Bruce Yule. I'm a professor of physiology at Michigan State University. I teach in the College of Human Medicine at MSU. And I've been a researcher on uh, mechanisms of lung injury for about 35 years now. And just by coincidence, about 16 years ago, as we were studying the angiotensin system in the lungs, we started to look at this enzyme called ACE2 and uh, to study what the normal functions of ACE2 are in uh, lung injury. And of course, now we know that ACE2 is more famous as the primary receptor for SARS-CoV-2. So all of a sudden I've unwittingly become a uh, expert on uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection mechanisms. So happy to be here. Excellent. And uh, Neil? Hi, I'm Dr. Neil Bode. I've been involved in biotech for 20 years. Uh, the first decade I was studying primarily autoimmune diseases and then through what started as antibody dependent enhancement research in dengue, I got involved in infectious diseases. So I have knowledge of both autoimmune diseases and uh, infectious diseases. Excellent, excellent, wonderful. Um, Bruce, are you able, Bruce Patterson? Um, I think, uh, let me just see if I can get Bruce to quickly say something. Is that working better, Bruce? Yes, that's better. Um, 
I'm Dr. Bruce Patterson. I'm the CEO and founder of Incel DX, a multi element uh, single cell uh, diagnostic company focused on uh, cancer, uh, infectious diseases, and immuno oncology. Uh, I'm a vir viral pathologist, um, trained at Northwestern, and, and uh, was head of virology at Stanford University, uh, where we were studying, uh, obviously, HIV and other pandemics at the time. So how's the NHS responded and where are we now? Okay, so initially, July, remembering it all was kicking off in March, July, your COVID recovery website was created by the NHS, which is a self-management resource for patients about symptoms and how to manage them. October, uh, the NHS brought out a five-point plan for post-COVID syndrome, okay? Basically, the five points are um, to develop, to, to Bring about a definition well that was done a couple months later as i just explained from nice that was good 10 million million pounds was put towards assessment clinics for patients with long covid there's going to be there was going to be further extension of this resource for patients your covid recovery further res research and also the establishment of long covid task force which i'm a member of next response april of this year National guidance for those, the assessment clinics. Okay, so talking again about the definitions and the establishment of pathways. Um, also, recognizing the need for addressing children and young people with long COVID. Prior to that, hadn't really sort of been given much attention. Data collection in primary care, and also some patient reported outcomes and experience measures. Yeah. As we approach the second wave, and I started to see patients with the long COVID itself, uh, I took the opportunity to start uh, looking at IgE levels in those patients. And I found patients with long COVID to have markedly increased levels of IgE. Uh, the normal being below 100 international units, I've had patients with uh, long COVID with values in the four, the four and five thousands. Uh, the treatment modality remained basically the same. Uh, I, in the first wave, started to uh, started to look at the uh, or classify the severity of the illness from the eighth day, rather than cl trying to classify severity from the first day, because there seemed to be this disconnect between uh, the the first phase and the second phase. So from the eighth day onwards, uh, I would classify it as a mild illness that seemed to be transient and self-limiting. A moderate illness that was not life-threatening but prolonged, which I thought was long COVID, and a severe illness uh, uh, almost to anaphylaxis with uh, patients that would desaturate very quickly. And those were the ones that would end up in ICU. Uh, so uh, in the second, or approaching the second wave, when I started to see these long COVID patients with uh, very high levels of IgE, I started to treat them again with antihistamines, Montelukast, uh, in the second wave, we noticed patients as well having a lot of gastrointestinal symptoms. And again, I decided to add uh, H2 antihistamines. Uh, and that seemed to be the only drug that settled those gastrointestinal symptoms down. So the modality that I use to treat long COVID system, uh, syndrome is uh, basically, I consider it to be a mast cell activation syndrome. And I use treatment to suppress that. Uh, in doing so, I found reasonably rapid recoveries. Most patients showed about 80% improvement within the first five days of starting treatment. And I've seen patients now that have had long COVID for a year from the, from the first wave. And even they showed a, a reasonably quick uh, response. Uh, the immunoglobulin E levels that I noticed showed a decrease. And I've used those to map full recovery. So I keep patients on this modality of treatment till the IgE levels get back to baseline. I took care to exclude any other history of atopy that might, uh, might uh, show these levels to be high for reasons other than coronavirus. Uh, what we found is that this could easily account for the majority uh, of the symptoms that we see uh, in long COVID. And in fact, we concluded in our second paper that from the exercise physiology literature that these cells are mobilized by exercise, which explains why to a person, uh, long haulers have exercise intolerance. 
And now having looked uh, at thousands and thousands of long haulers and looked at their immune profiles uh, and their cellular subsets, uh, we're convinced that this is a major mechanism uh, of long COVID. Has anybody else used statins in the context of long COVID? Is there any um, information that's There's there? reference in the literature of, of statins being used both for acute and long COVID. Um, I mean, statins are known to be antithrombotic. They're antiplatelet in, in their, uh, they have antiplatelet activity, which is important in the context of the vascular inflammation and the attendant thromboses and uh, uh, that can, can happen from that. But the statins have a generalized down-regulatory eff effect on inflammation in general. They're, they're, they have anti-inflammatory effect. My, my, my supposition is that their use in cardiovascular medicine is more dependent on their anti-platelet effect and the anti-inflammatory effect than it is on the cholesterol effect, which I think is a paraphenomenon. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so so the, uh, the use of statins is, is, is by itself is a, an interesting intervention. And there, a lot of them are off patent, as we know. A torvastatin is one of the most common of the, of the uh, and I, I suspect it's as useful as any other statin. But the question I asked him was what kind of dose? Because when you raise a dose necessarily to a level that he may want to go, you, you start bumping up against the side effects like myalgia, which is, uh, uh, you know, which is unpleasant and, uh, and, and dose limiting. So I was curious whether we're in the range of statins that are at the low range or at the high range for his particular uh, use uh, of them. Or, but as I say, they can be used in general as anti-inflammatories and, and anti-coagulants um, anti uh, as well.